Hello, I'm just going to be going over how to convert opacity-based thieves uh, methods to a fully geometric method. So here I've got a model, and you'll notice these thieves are actually rough block out um, geometry, and then using opacity mask. And the problem with this is that it generates really long render time. So here with the opacity mask, I'm a minute and 53 seconds. Whereas here with the only geometry, no opacity, I'm down all the way to 38 seconds. It uses a bit more memory, but that's because uh, the way I model the leaves, they're about 40% higher poly, which is fine in my case. I could have modeled them lower poly. And if we take a look at what the geometry looks like, it looks like this. So you can see no opacity mass, just only raw geometry. So going into the method of this, the first thing I do is I'm isolating all the leaves. So assuming you have an imported model, I just only do the leaves, and then I'm running it through a 4-H connected piece loop. And the theory of this, it's just a UV deformer essentially with a couple uh, workarounds that I have to do for this specific case. Um, likely you would have to do something slightly different than this. So the first thing you want to do is model your new loop geometry. So mine looks like this. I'm just using Tobo build and I'm tracing over my diffuse texture. So if I go into the UV viewport, this is my diffuse texture. And I'm just tracing over the geometry. And I'm just making sure that I uh, UV it and transform it. So that's zero one. So you'll notice this is UV space, zero to one, but the three D space. And then um, going back to operating on the three D geometry, the first thing I'm doing is converting the UV attribute to a point class. And this is so that I can access the UV attributes and convert this into its UV space as well. So you'll notice if I go to my UV space. It looks like this, and now it's in 3D space, but it's actually flipped, so I'm just inverting this here so now it fully matches UV space. And I'm poly expanding it just so that I can array the original geometry on. And this is one of those uh, specific workarounds that I had to do in this case because you can see if I go back to the original, it's only using half of this texture, and in some cases it only uses a quarter of the texture just to generate some variation. So I wanna make sure I'm only UV deforming the geometry that I need. So I'm just using um, a ray to do that. And I'm just deleting what is not intersecting. And from here, I'm just inverting it again since it was flipped. And then now this is the UV deformer, which does all the work. So you can see this is the original. And this is the new. If I just sort of overlay them on each other, you can see it's basically a perfect deformation. And I'm just grabbing, um, it's just three simple lines, really just two. So I'm just creating a UV position vector, which is equal to the position X and Z of this right here. So this flat piece in UV space, where I'm creating a 2D space with the 3D space coordinates. So I've got the UV is equal to the X and the Z, and the W is just equal to zero, so UVW space. And then the position vector, I'm sampling the position value. So this is one, so this is the first input, which I've looked up, hooked up to here, which is the original geometry. So I'm sampling the position value with the UV um, attribute. And then the sp UV space I'm sampling in is this attribute I just created up here, which will give me the relative interpolated positions. And then I'm just assigning that to the position of these points which gives me this. So after that, I just complete the 4-H loop, and this is the result I get. So all the leaves are nice and deformed, as they should be, and that's all. I hope this was helpful.